Matrix n track theft recovery operation. It's Wednesday the 5th of February 2020. So we took a call this morning about quarter to five from a customer saying he'd had his motorbike stolen. It's a Triumph uh, Sprint ST9551 in blue. Uh, he woke up and he said he heard the motorcycle revving. I'm not sure if that's his motorcycle or a revving motorcycle as they pushed it away. That's the normal method they use once they break the lock. He did have a disc lock on the uh, bike, but no cover on it. The customer's location is Hammersmith, London, and um, he has got a remote control for his tracking system, and he has not armed it. So that meant that we've had to send a signal to remotely arm it. Now, because it was on a watch list, we had that in a shorter sleep cycle, and we managed to get it in alarm within a couple of hours. And that's reporting a sales site uh, in the Fulham area, which is literally a few miles from Hammersmith. So as normal, they've been taken locally and just stashed locally. Now, even when the unit was in alarm, it took us something like 25 minutes before we got the first valid GPS. We got a few GPSs without the altitude, but the first valid one um, has come in and showing it near some flats. So if we look on the street view, we can see there's lots of um, garages, integral garages. It could be in one of those or it could be um, up against this wall here on the street view. We can see the parking bay areas. Okay, so we've, because we've got a GPS position, the control room, we're trying to send that through to Met Police. Um, they've already been on the phone to me and said that the Met Police don't want the image, which is kind of weird. Um, they're saying that they can't respond for at least 60 minutes to that incident. And then if they do respond, if they do respond, they will then request the location of the bike that we have for the GPS. So not very encouraging from the Met Police um, and hence another reason why we're heading off because if we can locate this bike and secure it and get a recovery van there, we're, we'll probably still be able to do that even if it's going to take us two and a half hours to get to site, two hours to get to site. We're still going to be able to do that before the police even get there. Um, yeah, not good, not good. But that's the plan. Uh, maybe we'll still get a phone call from the police to say they have managed to get there, they've got the bike. Happy days, that'll all be good. I'll just turn around and come back down the motorway and uh, that'll be job done and we can get back to normal business. Hi Mel, just checking uh, location. Is it still in the same place, everything? Still in the same place, yeah, hasn't moved. Any Anything from the Met Police of about turning Nothing up? Nothing at all. Nothing at all, no. Yeah, so nine miles to go, um, and as we've just heard there, no police haven't attended site yet, so it looks like we are going to be there first. Okay, so we're literally a couple of miles away from this location, but I have just received a phone call from the customer, and he said that the police have been to that location, and uh, they found the bike at that location, so we're probably going to be able to return and go back, but in in talking onwards with the customer he's basically said the police have left him at that location which is kind of not very good because uh, he can't ride the bike because apparently his helmet was in his top box and his top box has been removed so he's gone to that location and he can't ride the bike home and the police have left him which is I, I suppose uh, better than nothing but not not ideal so I've told him to hold fire there and we'll meet up with him and then um, we'll, we'll look after his bike while he gets a helmet or we'll arrange for a, a recovery truck to take his bike back to his home address. Hi, yes, Sandra's just emailed to say um, she's had an automated message come through saying police have found it at 9.49. 9.49, that's 11 minutes. Yeah, I've spoken to John. Um, he's, yeah. he's with the bike, but they've left him. So they've... Oh, bloody hell. They've left him there and he can't ride it home because he's got no helmet. So, okay. so I don't know what he's doing. So I just said to him, uh, we're, we'll pull up and help him. Either um, yeah. either we get a recovery vehicle or um, he can, I'll stand with the bike while he, he goes and gets a spare helmet or something, if he can ride okay. it. You John? Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, thanks, Mel. So when you said you woke up and you heard revving, was, was that another bike pushing it down the road or something? Or was no, it your that, bike? That, that was this. It they was actually... really loud. One rev. Yeah. Obviously, when they started it up. Yeah. And then they were off. And that was it. Oh, bloody hell. So... <coughs> so at least they haven't cut your disc. They've just cut the lock. Because sometimes they cut the disc off. Well, I wonder whether they've cut it off or whether they've somehow levered it off. But I found that I've got the two parts of it. Oh, right, OK. That were left. And also, you know, the wire, the yellow wire. Were these wire. scratches from before or have they damaged yeah, that? Yeah, no, no, that was, that was weird. Um, right, OK. Yeah. And they've put a, a break in it there somewhere where they've levered that up. Obviously, right. have a look and see if it's got a tracker on it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know whether they've taken the seat up. I okay. To do well, that. yeah, our control room sent the, got hold of the police and told them where it was when the GPS came right, through. So that's they, they, how they, that's how they found it. it. Yeah, yeah, we contacted them because the GPS came through. It took a long while, but it was up against a wall, a big wall right, on that housing estate down that's there. Right, it? Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was just delaying the GPS coming through. So, but they said they couldn't get to it for an hour, earliest, and even then they weren't sure. So uh, I came up anyway because we weren't sure whether they're going. But that's good that they got it and you've got it. But um, I'm right. just showing that. So the options are now: I can stay with the bike, um, and you can go. I don't know. Have you got a spare hammer or not? No, I have to go and buy one somewhere. All right. So the other option is we just call we call a recovery and and get it to- recovered for you because that's included in our service. So customers just walked around the corner. It's actually over in that housing estate over there where that tall building is. So he's walked it out of there uh, just to move it to a safe area. Uh, police left him. So they did actually manage to get the bike started. They knocked the barrel through 180 miles an hour. That's pretty nippy. <laughs> and they've levered up the, the lock on the petrol tank and uh, taken the top box off the back. I was walking along through the park and I saw the police about two hours ago. Yeah. Oh, OK. But now we're just going to wait for a recovery van to come and tow it away. Yeah, that'd be yeah. practical, yeah. I can recommend them. Like mm. the oh, so you're the finder. Yeah, I'm the finder, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Daniel just turned up in his recovery vehicle. So yeah, they. Uh, take the black one, please. No, no, it's not the black one, it's the blue one. No damage, it's not They knocked it, barreled it, yeah. We, had a, we were speaking to a chap here earlier, he's got Triumph as well, and he said he's had it stolen three or four times in the last... Yeah, it's, it's, he said it's gone mad on this, on these bikes. Yeah, the speed triples normally. Yeah, speed triple. Yeah, this was a speed triple, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They they go. Go. It's a black minute, one. A minute and they've got it started. Uh, Daniel from DMR Recovery, great guy. He's going to be taking the customer back to Hammersmith with his bike because he ain't got his helmet. This is the guy you want to call in London. You want your bike moved around. Superstar. Off she goes. Sorted. So we've already done one recovery this morning, a Triumph uh, motorcycle, and now it's just gone three o'clock in the afternoon. We've received another call from a, a customer asking if we can help them locate and recover a stolen lighting tower. So that's like a, a generator with a telescopically raised uh, bed on it, which has got the floodlights that they use on like motorways or anywhere really so it's just a set of floodlights um, but they can be quite valuable and easily nickable so we've got a cell tower which is showing Lingfield area that's uh, quite close to Gatwick it's quite a low signal um, so just maybe five or six percent signal strength so it's probably back from a road or it's inside a shipping container or in a lockup um, it's a very old tracking unit this one um, no GPS on this unit, so we're gonna just do a radio find at this location. And just before we left the office, we've um, mapped out some industrial yards and some areas that we target areas, we call them, just basically where we, we think this type of asset may be stashed away, uh, ready to go cold. So yeah, about 80 miles from where we are, and uh, we may get there just before it gets dark, but I don't think that will affect us much because we'll have to put the roof antenna on and um, be using RF to find this device all being well. So we're not far from Gatwick Airport. Um, 
We're about 3.5 miles from the cell site location. Um, we've got the roof antenna on the car and we've got the RF turned on. So I've just pulled over in Lingfield. We're not quite at the sales site, but I've got the RF. So I'm gonna head out, turn left, see if we can pick, get the signal to increase. So there's 20 mile an hour speed limit here. So we'll just carry on through the village. Definitely getting louder. going there we go that looks like it to me found it yeah so it's just right in the middle of Lingfield it's just parked on a lay-by um, oh, out in the open so it's, it looks pretty 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 safe pretty easy all right so I'll go so around wait for the police yeah Please, no, I'll just call Sean and see if he can get the customer here to pick it up. They put this um, stolen set of tower lights by this uh, fence in here to make it look like it's supposed to be here, so no one will call it in. Um, customer's en route, about 45 minutes apparently. Okay, so that's a pretty easy find, just come into the village and they just left it here right in the driveway here. This machine, TL90. Tower. 1059. Serial number. It looks like the stickers are being taken off the side there. Classic sign in there, stickers are taken off. Hmm. Someone's left something on top of there. Probably the hours hours on log or something on the top there. Yes. Okay. Didn't even bother locking it up again. Park the car right up so they can't tie tow, tow this off. Anyone comes up. Strange got this this fence in here, so it definitely looks like they're doing some work here, so. Okay, so the driver's just literally a mile away, um, but there's, there was a van that just pulled up on the main road. He stopped, um, this van stopped for a while and then um, did a Yui in the middle of the road, turned around and did a Yui at the van. And I thought, oh, why, why has he done that? He could have turned around here, you know, right next to me, but he didn't want to come up here. So I, I think that van could have been coming back to bring the, get this tower light and take it off. You know, it could have been the bandits coming back, but... Um, He's turned around and gone anyway, because we're parked here protecting it, so... Uh, anyway, so the driver will be here in a minute anyway. I don't think that van's going to come back. Cool. Well, this will be the, the driver turning up here. Have you got a big enough loader there to put that on? Don't say that one was nicked earlier. Gonna take that off of there, off the ramp, and then he's gonna drag that tower light up on the back with that. So that'll be interesting to watch. I say, is that a big enough truck to come and get this little tower with? I suppose it's what they all they had in the area. Wouldn't this normally have your name tags on it? Have they taken them off, have they? On the back here, would they, yeah. normally, have, would they normally have something on the back? Oh, there. Yeah. There. Yeah. And on the sides. Yeah, they take... See where the stickers were? 
Yeah. I did stick at it, but they haven't took the number off the front. No. They took them, but... Yeah, that's the plant number, yeah. Plant number is a bit obvious, isn't it, really? What's this for then? Some sort of job log, is it? That's for the uh, instruction book. We have to ah, the right. Pack. Health and safety. Yeah. yeah. If you're going downhill, you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> Which you, you are. are. Yeah. How much are these worth then? A new one, and these set you back about 10 grand. 10 grand? Well, this is an old one, really, but it's still worth yeah. a bit. Still worth three or four grand, maybe? Uh, yeah, they make money, so... Yeah, so the plan is to use that JCB to pull it on, because he ain't got a winch this in, so... You can bring that wheel up now, yeah? Take up the slack. Slowly, slowly. A few little scrapes. Okay, so where he's where he's actually got a difficulty is that that road. He can't get down, someone just said. It gets narrower and narrower, he won't be able to get down. So he's gonna to have to try and reverse round and turn turn around in this, this area here, come down this lane here. Maybe we can guide him out, be a bit of fun. This is the difficult bit, reversing round. Go on! Go on! Keep coming! Keep coming! Whoa! Bloody marvellous. That's close. Go on, you're all right. You're gone. You've made it. See you, Mike. No worries. There you go. You've managed to turn around. So we're coming up to quarter to eight at night. So that's about 12 hours we've been on the go. Yeah, Wednesday the 5th of February. Pretty busy, but all done and dusted for us. Automotive Centrac. Cracking. <laughs>